Hi, this is Anna from Flexicon, and today I want to show you how you can get to the percentage of your first time write process. Now, first time write is often a way to describe the ideal process when it goes through from the beginning to the end without any of this kind of rework or ping pong behavior or inefficiencies that we see in processes so often. So one way you could look at the first time write or straight through processing scenarios is to look at the cases and then to inspect the different variants for your process. There you see the most frequent variants. For example, we see that variant one is focused, um, is followed by 88 cases, um, making up 15% of the whole data set, variant two by 77 cases. And we can look at examples for all of these variants. However, um, in many processes, the number of variants can increase really quickly. So here we see for 608 cases, we have uh, 98 different variants. So looking through all of the different variants and determining whether they're corresponding to a first time write scenario or not can be quite time consuming. And if you just focus on the main variants, you might miss some other scenarios that are actually also valid and would fall into that category. So another way to approach this uh, question would be to work directly from the process map, where you have an overview of all of the 98 variants in one picture. And the way to do it is that at first you should think about uh, finishing all the preparational and cleanup activities that you might want to do. For example, let's say in your data set you still have um, certain unfinished processes that are in progress, they haven't completed yet. For example, let's say in this purchasing process here, we see that there are some cases that are at the stage of being analyzed. And if we would wait for a few more weeks, we would see more activities going on. So we have these additional endpoints here, um, not just the regular endpoint leading to pay invoice, which marks the end of our process, but we see these two other alternative endpoints. So as a cleanup activity, what we might want to do here is to focus on all the cases that have finished and take those cases as the reference point for our analysis. So a quick way to do that would be simply to click on this dashed line here in Disco. Um, so we are filtering for this particular end activity, but then what we want to do is actually exclude cases that have finished in that particular early endpoint. We only want to get the other ones and actually we can exclude this second early endpoint as well and only keep the ones that go to pay invoice. Now, when we apply the filter, we get only the process map for all cases that have completely finished. They have run from create purchase requisition until the endpoint that we want in our process, pay invoice. However, the question that we had at the beginning is that we wanted to see how many cases in terms of a percentage follow the first time right scenario. And actually we want to get an answer to that question based on all completed process. We don't want to keep incomplete cases um, in, that, in that set. So what we see here is that 67% of all cases have completed, but now when we go into the question for the first time write scenarios, we would actually use those 67% as our new 100%, as our new reference point for the following analysis. So the way to do that is that we actually can make a copy here at this point in time. For example, we give it a name like completed cases, and then there is a checkbox here that says apply filters permanently. So we have this endpoint filter applied and we want to keep it, but we want to apply the filter permanently to take a new reference point um, based on the outcome of this filter. So if we create this copy, what you can see in the, in the project view is we have now a new data set. We created this based on the name. We can um, rename it here. And then what you see is that the result is the same. So um, in the previous data set, we applied the filter. We can still see the 67% and we can see the number of events and cases. And if we go back and forth, we see that the copy has exactly the same 
number of events and cases. So it's the same um, the same data set, but now we have reset this percentage to 100%. So if we would go in here, we could not change this endpoint filter anymore, which we could do in the previous one. So we could still make changes here. We can't do that with the permanent copy. However, if we now take this new reference set, um, we can see this as our new 100% and we can work from here to um, look into our first time write scenarios. Now, what is something that we would not see as a first time write scenario? For example, we have a lot of rework activities here going on. Um, amend request for quotation. So here is an existing request that is being amended. It's being changed. Um, so that's an additional step that we wouldn't want to have. This is not a first time write scenario. So one quick way to exclude all cases that go through this extra step would be to simply click on this activity. This is another shortcut which brings us to a filter uh, where we can keep all cases that follow or perform this particular activity at a certain point in time through this filter this activity link. But then we do not actually want to focus on the cases that do perform this particular step, but we actually want to do the opposite. So we will change the filter from mandatory to forbidden, which now excludes all cases that perform this particular step at a certain point in time. And we apply the filter and we can look at the new result. And we can do the same thing, for example, with this other amend activity. We could have done it in one step, but we can also step by step work ourselves through the different um, rework and extra steps that we see in the process map. Now, by doing that, we can already see that the percentage um, adapts here. So right now we're looking at 54% of our reference uh, data set, which are remaining based on the filters that we have currently applied. But we are not finished yet. We still have certain uh, other scenarios that we are not considering as first time right. For example, let's say we do not want to focus on this activity here right now, but there are certain path. For example, there's a backlink where you go back in the process, which is something that you do not consider first time, right? You want to exclude all cases that go through this particular path, this kind of backlink through the process. So I can do the same thing. I can click on this path, which gives me this overview badge with all the metrics, but also this button that allows me to filter all cases that follow this particular path. Now, if I click this um, button, then I get this pre-configured filter, the follower filter, which focuses now on all cases that go directly from this particular activity to that particular activity. So with the directly followed option, I'm getting all cases that do follow that particular path on which I just clicked before. Now, what I actually want to do is I want to exclude them and remove them from my data set to focus on the ones that do not follow that particular path. So what I can do is I can change the directly followed option to never directly followed. And again, I can apply the filter and work myself um, through the remaining rework loops in the process. I see there's still this amend activity. So actually I want to get rid of that too. So I would go and put this to forbidden. And that way I work myself <clears throat> through the process. So what you can see here now is, and we could go on and do the same for the rest of the process where there's also certain additional steps and um, yeah, rework um, scenarios that we want to exclude. But by doing that, you're not um, limited by looking at different variants that you want to focus on, but you can work yourself through the process map in a very visual way. And you can keep only those areas in the process that you consider first time right. Now, when you're finished, you can simply read off the percentage here um, in the lower, lower left corner of Disco to see how many cases actually fall into the first time right scenario that you defined in this iterative way. And you can also look at the cases and then see which of the variants remain. And these are the different variants, the different scenarios, um, the first time right scenarios that you've kept. Now, I hope this was useful. Um, let us know what other kind of analysis you're doing with Disco and what would be useful for you to learn in the future. Thanks.